Hello, everybody. Here we go. All right. There's no camera on me, I just realized, but that's all right. You don't really need to see me. Good evening, everyone, for this special Saturday night stream. What do we got going on here? Who do we have? Mansage, Queen City Amusements, Bamfart. Um, I'm not sure why the screen is flashing like this. Uh, I do remember it happening before. It was an issue. What was an issue regarding? I think it was... Uh, Was it that happened before? Hey, Crispy, how you doing? We have one of our mods here. Hello, KB Bradshaw. So guys, I'm on my, um, to do these Photoshop streams, I'm on a different computer, so I don't have all the access to the preset uh, windows and things like that. So um, all I have is, uh, chat if you guys sub i usually call it out but if i don't tonight uh that will be why i'm not going to get necessarily alerts on the screen I'm, i don't even know if chat's going to function on the screen but i'm noticing that the window i'm looking at uh it's flashing and i remember this happening before thank you for the sub ben loss hey jake carlson art hey poop kid hello the pathetic spider boy Blackie Dow, Black <laughs> Blacky Dow, Black Widow. Thank you for the uh, sub. Appreciate it. What was causing that before? Oh, I can't remember. There was a simple fix. Maybe if I just go full screen. Let me see if that does it. Did that resolve it? Did that work? Can someone, the problem is when I go to full screen, I can't see other windows on the Mac I have set up here. Um, hmm. Anyone? No, it looks like it's still doing that thing. Strobing lights. Hold on one second. I'm going to Google this. have something to do with monitor refresh rates, but I don't remember this happening before. Or no, it did happen before. Uh, hmm. Is it still flickering? That seems to have worked. No. Oh wait, I, I see some, okay. Now it's just kind of doing in the upper left-hand corner.
All right, that seems to have resolved it. I don't know what I... Oh, no, it's still there. Okay, I'm looking at it now. It looks like it's okay. All right. Looks like the flickering stop, even on the upper left-hand corner. I'm not sure why, other than it just has, which is great. All right. The solution, I didn't do anything, I just moved some windows around, so obviously there was uh, issues. Can I make it a little darker? Uh, you could probably make it a little darker on your screen. I think that would probably be easier. All right, let me see if I can do this here. I did, all I did was move some windows around. You know what? I know how I can fit. I can just turn off. Let me do this. Let's see what happens if I turn off this part of it. Got it. Cool. All right, awesome. So tech savvy, absolutely. All right, I, I turned off the mirror imaging, so I think I can now read chat and work on the screen here at the same time. Got a bunch of, I've not used this setup over here in a while. Just realized I have things in the way. All right. So I, I picked this particular um, creator's uh, samples. This is um, a person named Thys, Thys Coaster, Coster, K-O-S-T-E-R, first name T-H-I-J-S. Um, he's Pym Particle, P-Y-M. He's Dutch, and he lives uh, in the Netherlands. Okay. Um, so what I liked about these pages, sometimes you see people's work and it's not quite there, but you don't necessarily have a fix for it. Thank you very much, Beliasa, for the sub 14 months in a row. Can you believe it? For 14 months. Wow. And, um, yeah, yeah, the tricep cam. Ever since I've injured myself, the tricep cam. <laughs> There'll be the tricep cam tomorrow. Byron the Bulb. Thank you very much, Byron the Bulb. Um, I'm going to make... Oh, I know what you meant by darker. Not the screen darker. You meant like this. Ooh. That was not good. Okay. So much for getting that working. Right. 
Hmm. All right, that did not work. Sorry, guys. I'm going to have to uh, see if I do this. All right. All right, great, perfect. I figured out a solution. I think I figured out a solution. Let's go into levels, I should do it. I think that's what you guys were asking for. Something darker like that. All right. Yeah, I want to thank the guys that came out. Um, I think SMC, Cardi, Waihe, Poop Kid, they are all at the... Um, Sam storytelling across media event at the San Diego Comic Con Museum in San Diego. So that's where I was this morning. Then I drove back up to LA and now I'm streaming. Um, but this is an art critique. So basically, people send me their work and I kind of go through it and try to find things where um, I help them maybe unlock ways to improve their work. So he's got these pages here. I thought it was pretty intense. I like the style. I like the the uh, layering of the, you know, let's go ahead and circle it. You can see it, you know, all, like in that circle, they have a light gray here, a black here, kind of a, me a couple medium values in between. So um, it's good. It's kind of fun to look at. Okay. Um, that said, I feel like there could be a way to organize the values in a way that um, creates meaning um, depth, right? So if this is value one and this is value two in terms of darkness and um, this is value three All right so one two three four What's good about doing this is that you can now create depth. And so generally, if you have someone in the foreground like this and they're heavily shadowed, okay, and you have something in the middle ground and then something in the far background, like clouds or something, maybe you do your clouds as a, if you're using this line approach here to kind of create level one darkness in the back. This is level four. So if you have a brick building here, maybe it goes like that. One second, guys. OK, 
Okay. And this is tricky because when you use all these different value patterns, okay, and you do it on a page like this, um, they don't necessarily help you create depth, right? In fact, it kind of flattens it out because um, there's grayness and darkness and value all over. So you're not using blacks to kind of cast shadows to pop out things from the foreground. So for example, let's use this second, well, let's go to the first panel here. Let's do that. If I were to ink this, I would try to think of ways to pop the foreground from the background. So I would immediately think this guy here in the foreground would be Right next. Actually, you know what I'll do is I'll just go instead of doing cross hatching, which could take time. I'll just do it based on something like this. And a lot of times when I not a lot of times sometimes when I draw something very pencil heavy, and I'll give you an example. Um, See if I can pop something in here. What I'm going to show you. Sometimes when I go in and do something very complex like this with lots of variants or gradations. Um, I will do a kind of a heat map, a tonal value study, so that the inker, Scott Williams, understands um, sort of the hierarchy of, of values I'm trying to create on the page. It's tough to explain. I'll have to show it to you if I can find the information here. Um, okay. All right. Maybe I send it as an email. Hold on. I'm trying to find... Right image. Yeah, I think I sent it as an email. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's not there. Hold on one second. Because uh, generally, when you um, Put stuff down. Let's see, Batman fifty. See if I can find all the things I. Hmm. I'm not being successful today at this.
Hmm. All right, well, I don't see it. All right, never mind. So what I'm doing here, it's the same idea, which is basically with cross-hatching, the idea is to think of the values you're creating. All right, so you want to go, okay, this is foreground. Let's do this for real. If this guy were all in silhouette, that wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing. And I understand the desire to put all this detail in the foreground. It's pretty cool looking. And you can keep it that way. I'll show you how. So if that's your foreground, and these guys are also in shadow here, mostly, based on the rendering, okay. We're gonna make this darker to separate it. Okay. And so, you really have four values. You have the dark value here that I created. You have the gray value that's right next to it, right here, and here, and here. You have white here, and you have this light gray that's in the pencil right here. So this is kind of how I would think about it. I don't think I would put black over here because it, it detracts from the depth you're trying to create in the panel. So if you go from, so again, squint and look at the page. These dark shapes are what you want to be looking at at the end of the day. So everything else you're going to probably do as a gray. And the pencils kind of really capture that gray except for what's up here. Right, so I would just lighten that up, honestly. I wouldn't put the shadow there. And then here, I would think of ways to pick up highlights. And I'm doing it as a gray tone. But at the, um, you're gonna do it all through cross-hatching, but this is conceptually how you wanna think about it. Okay, and then even with this, if the light source is over here in the far upper left corner, up here, you're going to have areas that are lighter over here. So what I would sort of recommend is to pick a light source, and that would help place the grays. The grays look visually very interesting in these pages, but they're not necessarily composed in a way that indicate light source. And as such, I think they can kind of interfere with the reading of the page itself, right? Okay, so keeping all that in mind, what I think I would do is, instead of doing a side, a double light on, on Magneto here, I probably would do something You know, think of how these shapes create shadows across the objects. Look for ways to basically create large enclosed areas of black. Especially on smaller figures like this, you're not gonna be able to really indicate a lot of detail. You kinda did it here with the knees, but I would go all the way black. I guess he's on a disc. Okay. 
And so right off the bat, you can still see the gray hatching that he's got here and there, which I think is important because you can then go in and actually do all that. But these big, broad kind of black shapes help anchor the figure, right? Then I would figure out ways to lighten certain areas of it so it's not all gray either. Same thing with Batman here. And he kind of has already done it, but I would do it even more. And put the, I'm not sure what's going on here. I feel like the, the folds in the cape are kind of, you know, does he have an arm up here? You have, you have to kind of make it something, I'm not sure what but then cast those shadows. If this arm is kind of draping that cape across. And if you got the cape down here like this, rather than just kind of put random cross hatching here and there, think of where the shadows go first, the true black areas. Pop those in, okay? And then after you've got that, go ahead and transition out of the dark areas into the light. Okay. And figure out where your lightest values are. So again, keep squinting at that page. So then, as he's got, I do like the cast shadows of the this element here. But rather than cast the cape to the left, I would cast it to the right. Like he has. So it was kind of inconsistent. He was casting the light to the right like I am now on this part, but then the figures above were double lit. And then I would carry through that lighting, all right, and do this, okay? That would be black. And that would be black. I don't think there would be gray here, all right? So I feel like the lines should represent grayness. They represent values two and three in between your one and four. And so you want to keep that in mind. So when you get to the big figure here, okay, you figure out the chunks. Okay. Figure out where your shadows, your core shadows are going to go. I'm just going to do the arm. And then do your grays like he's got. All right. 
then when you get through here, and this is a gun, or knife, sorry, do that texture. Take the scales, I would take the scales and go to black here. I would pop in some more black. I'll go all the way to black here. And just create more of a transition between your white areas here to your gray areas represented by this crosshatch to your black areas over here. You'll just get stronger weight on your figures and, uh, and the light will look better. It'll just look, look more dramatic. In fact, you could probably even have gone all the way to black here like this, to be honest. And certainly by the time you get to this gun over here, you could just do the highlights. I would have popped in all this in shadow. And with the gun, I would have Again, put that light source here like you did with the stock and carry that consistently through. And this part, it's, it's a little busy, it's hard to tell what's up. This is, I think this is the collar that goes around his neck. Here's the sword. There's so much going on anyway, I don't think and like kind of drawing each piece really makes it any clearer and I think it actually looks even clearer if you just kind of blacken it out actually and I know that half the face is red but I would go to black everywhere there again the, the goal is if you kind of squint you should be able to see the figure should be able to see the the grand shape that's being created. I don't think I need the details of the knife here because it's going to be in shadow. Maybe I'll even kind of... So maybe on the side of his head, I'll do that. That's the shadow of the, the cheekbone the brow, right? And that would actually even crosshatch How do I cross hatch? Maybe, maybe it's this way to kind of transition all the way to black itself. Then figure out where the highlights go. So this is like a very strict kind of black and white illustration and you're going well my style I want to put more cross hatching I get it I do the same thing so how do we do that okay you can do it by feathering out of the black areas All right if the black areas are four create level three uh, Three values, darkness, All right? Even this kind of rendering creates a gray transition, so it's not quite as dramatically black and white, All right? So you can kind of go to town with this.
And what I get out of this is if I just squint again at the page, and I do like the the midtones here, but I don't know if I would put those midtones underneath. Okay. You should be able to read what what you're looking at immediately. Okay. All right, let me go. All right. going on uh, <laughs> I'm just um, checking out chat here uh, oh I see yeah, Corgi tw 2016. Uh, yeah, there. Look, I'll I'll just be forthright with you. There are a lot of people that have met me not just several times, many, many, many times, and kids, adults, whoever. Um, the problem with quickie headshots is that if I do one for you, and uh, I generally have no issues drawing a quickie headshot for anyone. Um, it's if there's a line, if there's a lot of people, or if I've turned away people already. I can't make the exception for one person, and um, it's hard for me to explain it because you can only see it from your point of view, but I would just explain from my point of view. Um, there, there's a reason why I make that decision. I'm not trying to be a jerk. I'm not trying to be a, you know, an a-hole to you. I'm not, why would I want to piss off my fans and people who have supported me? But there's a reason for the policies and the way I conduct myself at shows because there, it's, there's... As soon as you start drawing, as soon as you stop, you piss off more people than you please. It just is. And you have to take my word for it. And I've been doing this for 30 some odd years. Um, you could draw for 100 people and then stop at 101. And that 101st person is so angry with you. It just doesn't add up. Um, so whereas if you just don't draw for 101 people, none of them get a sketch. They're actually super happy from the from the experience so i i think you just have to understand that um a no one's entitled to a sketch right it's just you know i don't think regardless of you know of how big a fan is i mean you know i i, I love a person's work i don't feel like they owe me anything um i mean i think that's part of being a definition of a fan i believe i don't think there's you know um no one's asking you or demanding that you be a fan. You have to choose the people that you support. Um, but I do try to give back to the fans as much as possible. But I also know fully there's no way for me to ever match the demand um, that would be there for whatever you want. So I have to kind of modulate it, moderate it, uh, and, and kind of do it in a way that... Uh, allows me to deal with the situations as they come up. So I apologize if it comes off being rude to you uh, or your family, but it, that's not the intention. Why would I ever do that on purpose, right? Anyway, um, and, uh, you know, honestly, Corgi 2016, <laughs> all I have to say is if you are really disappointed, you should probably stop being a fan. And that I'm not saying you should. I'm just saying, in general, if there are things that aggravate you, I, you know, why support it, right? So, okay, all right. Eric Fisher, artist, like always on point, always <laughs> um, very focused. Um, Uh, 
Ah, don't worry about that, Crispy. You enjoy your dinner. It's all right. We can handle it. The 360. <laughs> nice. All right. Uh, so now we're going to move on to these other panels. I'm going to I'm going to focus on one in particular. I think could be. Um, I think helped with a little bit of organization. Oh, and when I black this area out, I'm not saying you don't put the cross hatching there. You can, I mean, look at like my Batman 50 cover or something. When I go to black, it could be super dark cross hatching that approximates a black value when you squint. So it's okay to cross hatch to create dark lines like he's got right here, you know, or even here. It's pretty dark. But it would be good to organize it overall because I think you've got black in here, you've got black in here, black here, black here. So you've got in the foreground, middle ground, background, all around, and um, I like it, the overall drawing style, but I think it could just be organized a little bit better. Right? So, again, with this particular shot, Think of the light source, right? And and maybe it's a thing where you just, he just goes in it after he pencils and just kind of erases as needed. Because if you do that, if you cast that light, And on this one, I don't know if I would cast that shadow. I would cast it at an angle like this. And I would cast the shadow at an angle like that. As opposed to the other way. And what happens is... The cast shadows kind of tricks the eye into thinking... That... There's actually light coming, and that helps create depth, right? I'm not sure what this element here is in the foreground on the upper left, but it's okay. All right, so once I've kind of established the light, and you carry it consistently, Forward. Okay. Now I can go and create the dark. Alright. And I'm going to turn this down a little bit. It's too intense. And obviously, with pencils, you can't make it um, just gray like this. So you'd have to represent this through cross-hatching. But man, like what happens if you pop a shadow down and go to black all the way in here? Hopefully this makes more sense as I do more of it. Sometimes it, I know what to do, but it's difficult verbalizing it. So asymmetrical light light sources or lighting schemes can really help create the depth that you're looking for. I think that's death stroke in the middle ground. So. Okay. Not 
not sure what that those clouds there are. But do you see how the um, the angled lighting it creates a little more uh, depth into it, right? The buildings are casting shadows on itself. Okay. Same thing with the shot of Deathstroke here. What happens if you go ahead and he's looking over this thing, so there's this cast light, which is cool. But man, why not just do it across the whole thing here? And then that would also impact, I think, the things that would be behind him. Okay. All right. And if you, again, go in and create white values like this, You want the eye to come in these panels to this area up here. You want to look here and here. So think of ways to use cross-hatching, light, lighting, cast shadows to really bring out those elements. I darkened everything else down here, and I'm not saying darken it by just throwing gray on it, um, but through the cross-hatching, I think, uh, by making it dark there, you're you're making this area stand out, pop pop out more. Okay. Um, one last thing I'll say, just in terms of anatomy, you just want to be careful with um, drawing in a two D plane when the figures are three dimensional. If that makes any sense, right? So he's done a nice job of creating a three-quarter view of Deathstroke here. But then I feel like he drew a very kind of flat 2D gun, and then the arm kind of gets flattened out. So what should happen is that shoulder should be here. So it's always a good thing to kind of draw through. The elbow pops out. And then that forearm goes back into space. This is the highest, this point of the elbow is the cl closest part to us. You have to create the illusion that from the shoulder joint to here, it comes out at us and then goes back in towards here. Okay. So let me just show you what was there before. Well, it's there before, it kind of, it imparted the information, almost like an Escher type drawing, like, oh, I, I see a shoulder, I see an elbow, I see a wrist, I see an arm, okay? But you really need to create more depth in that part, three-dimensionality, right? So here's, here's the shoulder, tricep, bicep, elbow, forearm, gauntlet, the hand. And so this gun comes here. The gun looks a little large. I mean, um, it could be a completely made-up gun. But if, if you're intending it to be a gun that's actually exists, I think the scale is off a little bit. Okay. 
even if it's like a 50 millimeter or 50 caliber sniper rifle. So I feel like it should be about this big. Nice job with the other hand. I would probably flay out the fingers a little bit more so that they're, they're not all in the same that they're not all lined up just so perfectly. And again, that elbow probably would come down. All right, you gotta draw through. So from the collar, collarbone to the top of the shoulder blade, drop that midline. That's where your chest is, okay? From the back, down the spine, there's your back. Okay, so it's hypercritical that you draw through. And then, of course, the eye needs to line up with the actual scope. All right, that line would have to go through there, see through there. So that's important. The bullet has to come out of... The bullets aren't here. They pop out of here. All right, so you got to line those two up. then that gear comes on like this. Okay, you could probably even have turned this head even more. I think at the end of the day. I like the, the head tilt that he put in there, so that's critical. And then that sword has to drape across the body this way. So it's actually going to come out like this. But it's kind of a bad tangent, so I think I would have cheated on that and maybe popped it up a little bit like that. So, th so there's not too much stuff happening in this little area right here. I'd have to put the sword over here. Okay. Alright. Um, and then once you have that, again, I start putting in shadows to help sell it So again, if you squint, that, that just adds weight, a sense of volume to the figure. All right. And then I create my lightest areas. Okay. And then I think about the medium values. Maybe ultimately I want these pouches to even go to black down here, so I'd kind of do a grad on them. 
so it all goes to black down in the center. Okay. See you later, Chunky Style 3030. Okay, so hopefully that kind of helps. I think it's important to uh, remember to figure out ways to pop volumes. So I'm going to do, let me show you an example. Right, think of the shoulder, shoulder socket, torso, all right. Shoulder muscle, bicep, elbow, forearm, wrist, top part of the fing uh, fist, sorry, finger there, neck, eye, eye, collarbone, Midline, okay. Ultra bad, it's okay. This uh, will be recorded for posterity's sake. <laughs> All right. shadow of the shoulder ball, the bicep, render out of that shoulder, forearm muscle here, bottom of the forearm, tendons across the fist. Front part of the face, shadow of the, the head across the body, carry that through. This forearm pops out. Ribs, stomach, pelvis, that, fo that, that leg's bent, pops out. Alright, this is before I even cross-hatch anything in there. And this arm can even cast a shadow across this. Right? Okay. I got a little overzealous with the right. So I'm just kind of reconstructing what what happened on that last drawing here. Okay. All right. In fact, I think that whole fol folding lesson, it's super, this is how you do the bent knee, right? Same thing. A lot of people struggle with this. 
Think about the pelvis. Almost like a pair of uh, underwear, I guess. The thigh coming out at you. The knee joint. And then the leg kind of going back into space. Behind. And then this thigh has a top line that goes all the midline that goes all the way. And has two lines like that that basically help kind of give you the sense of volume and the shape. Okay. All right, let's do that again. Oops. Okay, same idea. This time I'm going to basically do the underdrawing in yellow. I thought I was going to do it in yellow, but I don't really see it. There's the knee. There's one muscle that goes on top. There's a bigger muscle here, a, a kind of a less pronounced muscle there. Tendons or muscles that go down here. The inner thigh muscle there. Kneecap, kneecap, calf, stem to the ankle, heel, the balls of the toes here, and then the toes that kind of pop out underneath there. Okay. Good night, Giovanni. Appreciate the bits, the support, you guys tuning in. I apologize, I'm not able to be as reactive to chat. Uh, it's just the way <laughs> toe balls. Thanks, Pope Kid. I, as soon as I said that, I was like, oh. thank you, Cynthia. I appreciate the support, guys. Yeah, it was good seeing you guys. Boston Comic Con. I met a bunch of you guys at San Antonio. I would say at every show. I meet more and more people that are watching uh, either on Twitch or YouTube. Okay. Um, okay. So, so that's the underdrawing. And then switch to black. And I don't draw everything you just kind of you know it's there all right but I do then start thinking about the shadows and the shadows are going to basically follow these thunder drawing that I have here. So if there's a shadow here, the more pronounced it is, the the bigger the sort of tear shaped shadow underneath that muscle. This muscle here, the the across the top of the leg, is relatively flat, so it's going to be consistent like that. kneecap, the front of the kneecap, lower kneecap, the calf muscle is going to cast a shadow like that, and then this inner thigh muscle, right? And because the light source is coming here, this thigh is going to cast a shadow across this whole bottom foot. Maybe the heel kind of pops out. The stem <laughs> casts a shadow across the foot. You could do that. Or you can just go like that. That works as well. Or you can even just go all the way like that. Or you can go full on black. 
It all depends on how intense you want that light source to be and how much detail you want to put. So this is the highly black and white contrasty version of this drawing. Okay. But there exists a version where I go in and I render. And this kind of pertains to the art sample I was showing, right? That I was critiquing, where I'm creating gray values. And a lot of people like this because it's detailed, adds vibrancy, it creates more depth, it's more work. People seem to like it when artists struggle more, they want their money's worth. Right? Even these little dits, a lot of people seem to like those because they feel like, oh, I'm getting something extra, I'm getting little dits. Right? And then this whole part, the, the pelvis and this leg could be casting a shadow. You could do this. Right? And you might go, well, it looks too, it doesn't look enough of a statement. So you can go do a cross hatch on it. Go to, you have it basically come down and kind of turn it into black. Same thing with these abs. The top part of the torso could be casting a shadow across the abs. So you can noodle it over and over to your ultimate delight, okay? And it's imp and these values are cool because if you put a cape behind this figure, now you can do stuff like this. I can go black here because that black next to that gray thigh makes it doesn't disappear. Cast a shadow like that. All right, and now I can go and render out. All right. And this is why you get like some of my drawings, especially when I ink myself, you see kind of a ton of cross-hatching because I basically will keep just playing around with the values through cross-hatching till I get the sort of depth and the uh, final effect that I'm looking for. A lot of times I don't even know what I'm looking for as I do it, right? Okay. Okay. All right, let's get back to the drawing here. Um, same thing with Batman's back of the helmet here. I would pop in the shadows first. And I see them, so I'm kind of inking what I've got here. And then he kind of renders out of it, which is cool. But I would also then extend the shadows cast that 
light. Alright, and then after I've got that, I don't know, I feel like I would probably just go ahead and put a core black in there. And then cast the light so it's mostly black on one side. I feel like that reads better. Okay. Alright, let's go to the next one here. Same thing, there's a lot going on. And um, some cool stuff, really cool stuff. I figure every now and then pure black would be good. The other thing I've noticed is that a lot of times he's drawing kind of flat on the page. Same thing with the, the shot of Deathstroke holding that gun. Are there ways to increase the 3D depth of the figures? Um, right? They're all like facing this character here. Right? So why not have the figures more in 3D. All right, so here's the socket. if you could see that right but the distance between the midline that peck and that peck to over there is going to be foreshortened it's going to be in perspective so this is going to be longer slightly than that okay and what that does is it turns the figure so that in a nutshell that's with other right it's in perspective to where we want the eye to go. Does that make sense? All right, because before it's kind of like he wanted to do it, but he was drawing it kind of straight on. The other thing that happens is if he's looking this way, we're looking at the underside of that cowl line right there. Underside. See the um, shoulder muscle there, tricep, bicep, pec one, pec two. You're not going to see as much of this shoulder as you do the other shoulder. The bicep's hidden by the forearm that's in perspective in front of that other bicep reaching for this gun. Right? You got to draw all that first. And then you can do the rendering, okay? Thank you, uh, UK Artist, for the sub. Ten months in a row, appreciate it. Monkus, it was good to have you at San Diego Comic-Con, appreciate it. So the same thing happens with Magneto. Magneto could also be better 
serve by pointing more towards the figure in the background. So he has done the thing where he's turned the, the neck, which is really good. And you're seeing the underside of the helmet. Okay. Probably would sell it a little bit more. So you see less at the top. So it's foreshortened. Okay. Then again, draw that middle line. It's tricky uh, drawing things in perspective like that. But generally, I find that the bigger it is closer to you, the smaller it is going away, the, the, the more it sells itself, right? So, um, so to recap, torso, center line, shoulder, bicep, forearm, wrist, fist, finger, one, two, three, whatever. You don't need all of them. You would only see a couple. This is where the neck would come out. Ear comes down here, underside of that chin, eye kind of buried up in there. Okay. Do you guys see that? Nipple one, nipple two, rib, 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 mouth, cheek, ear would be up higher there. Okay. This guy looks like kind of like a an avenger type right Uh, construction lines are helpful. More of a cast shadow there. All right, does that make sense? Kirby Crackle.
Okay. I'm just goofing around right now. Um, let's see what else we're going to do here. Oops, I'm going to try the other way. Oops. If you go to, uh, go to Dodge Tool, make it very, very light. You can go back in and I don't know about that last part. I don't know. So, I don't know what I was doing there. Just having a little fun. Okay. last page here, which I thought was well done. Oops. Probably went too dark. Um, there we go. That's probably better. Right there. Uh, I like it a lot. Um, there are a couple things I would have changed. I think there's some awkward stuff going on with Magneto's right arm because it's like turning towards us and then turning away from us at the fore forehead. Right? It looks like it's Mystique, the woman in the foreground. She's got a skull on her forehead, but these are obviously his own designs. Okay. Again, Where's that center line on his on Magneto? Be helpful if I had a slightly thinner. Very critical. Oh, we 
voice draw the musculature in. I like that kind of turn form, and then I do the cape. So this one, I feel like it would be, we would see more of that palm. And it would be kind of cool if this head were turned a little bit more so we could see the face. Right? And then with this one, I would have turned it so that the same way I drew that kind of center line at the chest, I'm going to draw the, the spine, the lats, So it's, I think it's important to kind of draw through the figure and then add the clothes and the armor afterwards. All right. Um, let me pull up that page again. So let's try that again. Um, I think I got the belt right here. That shoulder is going to come out here. The head is going to be turned so. We're going to see the back part of that face, of the head. Right? And then we don't want to shorten his leg in a way. And we're going to see the back side of that leg. And we're going to see the back side of that heel of that foot. All right? It's important for us to see this whole section here. Okay? And then since he's Making eye contact here would be kind of cool if she were also looking up. Draw the center line, sh shoulder, shoulder point one, shoulder point two, right? And then I could put the, the floor, the foreground right there. So now they're all kind of looking at one another. And you have a nice composition where you are creating a triangle in perspective. Does that make sense?
Okay. So let's do that. What's going on? There we go. So to recap, um, how to draw, if we have a torso coming towards us, how do we draw, so this guy looks like he's running at us this way, towards us, but he's looking at something behind him, I've done this before, but you go to the center point where the collarbones meet. Two muscles come out from that point here to your ears. One, two, it's like headphones. Boom. Okay. The back of the neck. From the bottom of those headphones, you draw underside the, the chin. From the top of that ear, think of a globe. Eye socket one. Because we're looking underneath the chin here, we're also looking underneath the nose. We're looking underneath the lips, the fore, uh, the forehead. Okay. Cheekbones. All right. So. Let me just reduce the size of the brush here. So everything is curved. All right, so someone coming towards us, but looking over his shoulder. Got it? Can you do all? Can you do that at home? Just practice, okay? And then you can drop in shadows. See the cowl on Batman's thing would arc like that. All right, he's looking that way. Or if there were a visor like this, it would be like that. Okay. Don't worry, it's not who you think it is. Looks like poop kid. Night, night 16. Thanks for the sub. Appreciate it. Hey, Ink One. How you doing? Long time no see. You can tell I'm a 
big fan of the Dodge tool. All right. Oops. Um. So those are kind of the, I don't know really what else I can kind of go into the remaining time. Trin, oops, I didn't know you created digitally. I, I really don't. I'm just messing around. Um, there's a lot of stuff you can do digitally. Um, though it's fun. I, I use it as if it were Real, a real tool, so I don't work a lot in layers. I tend to flatten, I tend to draw over the lines and stuff like that. So um, let's just do something very quickly. If you are gonna, I'll just do a quick digital primer. This is the way I would do it. Background layer one. Uh, in the background, I would go ahead and drop in something light. And do my underdrawing like this. So maybe like so you can see it. There's your classic egg midline, eye line, nose line, mouth, ear, nose like that, hairline, neck that the egg sits on. Sort of the pyramid that the neck sticks out. It's kind of like a monitor stand. Alright, this is the monitor. Here's the neck stand. Center line where the chest is, where the pecs are, shoulders kind of sticking out like that, eye sockets. And then on layer one, I go back in with black. Maybe I would go in with uh, a gray and apply shadows like that. The egg would cast a shadow on the neck. The neck would cast a shadow on the pyramid. Right. Core shadow. Okay. And pick out white. Turn off the background. Ooh, I don't want to do that. Let's um, let's do this on the background. I'm gonna erase it, but I'm just gonna reduce the underdrawing because it was too dark. But, and this is kind of what I do with pencils. I kind of lightly erase that pencil. Go back to the top layer. Go to uh, Mostly a black here. I thought I had mostly a black, but it's the eraser tool. Make my brush smaller. And now I'm drawing one eye there, the other eye across from it, the nose, the mouth, chin, ear. Temple line, other temple, back ahead. Hair. Green hair. Go to 
red for the mouth, blue on the nose. Yellow teeth. Uh, let's go even lighter gray. Um, purple. Thing. Background, we're going to go, let's go like a hot pink, red. Let's up the opacity of that. All right, let's pick out this green. It's too intense. Not intense enough. Draw on color a little bit. Bring it down a little bit here. And painting is, uh, I don't know what they say. They say it's like drawing without the lines, right? Just trying to get rid of the lines here. And just build up values. Let's go to multiply instead of normal. That should help us get kind of help blend what we're doing a little bit more. Okay. And then what I do um, is say if I go in that eye, go to uh, not black, but let's go to a very dark kind of brown. Typically, they tell you that there's no true black in a, in life. And then I'll go in and add details of this kind of very dark brown. And then I usually go and pick colors from other parts of the uh, image that I have. So I'm not going back and creating new colors. I want to work with a semi-limited palette. You know, like some of the red that I have here. Some of that gray. kind of hear, hopefully through the microphone, like how quickly um, uh, moving the pen, the stylus across the, the Cintiq here. It's almost like I'm drawing. I tend to work very kind of quickly.
you know, I didn't add any blue. It's, it's add, add a little cool blue somewhere in here, very lightly. Kind of play off the uh, the rosy kind of red. So I put the blue in contrast uh, to the the warm colors, and I'm just adding it into the face, kind of from the bottom. Now I have no idea if this is the way you're supposed to do it. This is just the way I do it. And so you're just continually building up um, values. All right. And then what happens is it gets a little fuzzy at times, right? So then I'll go back in and pick the, op the color. kind of thin out the lines so that they're not looking so produced by a stylus. All right, so you're drawing the shadows and then you pick then you're drawing the highlights over the shadows. color in there. But I also like the color is just kind of sitting like ink at the bottom of a, a bubble. So like this gray is gray and then at the bottom like it's like the blue watercolor is kind of sat in a puddle at the very bottom. Same way you take like a, a, a rendered sh shape um, you know, black and white drawing and you make it darker and darker so it becomes all black at the bottom. It's the same kind of concept at least. I don't know if that made any sense. this red in here, so I'm going to carry it through. And then hopefully as you shrink it down, all right, you sort of see it coming together. And I'm not using any special brushes. I'm just using the default thing here. Um, but if I really got into it, I think I would use those special brushes. This is the liquify tool if I wanted to fix things. Sort of see what it had before. Okay.
And then a lot of times um, I like to do is, uh, you know, as you kind of work your way through this, just kind of continue to make refinements here and there. I'm back on the four. Forehead. Um, as you can add a very quick, uh, what's it called? A gradient, a band, as it were. And you can do, oh, that's not what I meant. No, what do I want to do? What is the reverse of that? There we go. Right, it's almost like uh, see how that works. It's almost like there's a light source kind of come across. But then that oftentimes looks too. Um, computer generated to me, so I'll go in break it up a little bit So it's just a lot of back and forth and trapping shapes, uh, catching little bits of color. It's kind of fun. That's the fun part of it to me is putting something down and then kind of obliterating it so that just a little bit of it remains. kind of cool effects you can get that way. And then if you do a little color dodge, obviously this is not finished, but at the end I would go in and hit up a little. So it, it can be very time consuming, obviously. Color dodge set on highlights, medium, or shadows. I don't know, it's the default setting. I don't I don't change anything. Yeah, it must be highlights. Yeah. So yeah, I do it all in one layer, uh, which is the way I would work if it was a painting. Even if I work on different layers, it always gives me a different effect than I intended, and I'll flatten it at some point because I, I do like the idea of kind of... Um, uh, replicating uh, kind of the real the way it would really kind of react if it was a drawing, right? Oops, no good.
Anyway, so I think I'm going to wrap it up. Appreciate you guys uh, tuning in, watching. Uh, I will be streaming in the afternoon tomorrow, California time. Obviously set your, your clocks back. And um, check Discord. I think there'll be information. Whoops. information on what we're going to do as a draw draw along I think This is kind of the way I work uh, when I'm doing digital painting, but I really don't do too much of it, as you can tell from the way I'm approaching this. All right. Grifter? Uh, that would probably be an easy one. Robot Man might be kind of fun. We could do that. Might make that might make sense, you know. It's interesting. It looks different here on my screen than it does on your screens. Castle Geek Skull. That's a good one. <laughs> um, yeah. So if you had the right tool, you wouldn't have to redraw the hair. You would just throw it once and you would get the line you want. So I have to taper it by hand, manually go in there. And, um, I think the secret to doing hair is to do it in large chunks. Layers you do, the more painterly it looks, right? The better results you get. You want to make sure you stay away from having um, any of the uh, you don't want lines like this that are all the same thickness. bad. No, no.
so I'll go in and manually kind of bring these down and figure out a way to clump them so they don't look like strokes of light. Try to make them look more hair-like. And it's just a very kind of tedious back and forth process. And then one other thing you can do is you can go in. Whoa. Huh. I don't know if I like. That was kind of cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much a Photoshop noob. <laughs> this, this, the, these are all like the, the most basic settings for the most part. Okay. All right. It's uh, 927, so I'm going to call it um, a night. Thank you guys for tuning in. Just uh, It was kind of fun just doing something that wasn't uh, intended to be a finished piece. Um, I did enjoy the color thing, so maybe I'll, I'll show you guys how I will take a black and white or a pencil drawing of a character and then do a color study on it usually as like a, um, as a new design for a costume so uh, thank you to the mods that uh, were here um, sorry you had to police some some people but uh, it happens thank you guys for tuning in i know it's a saturday night and there's other things that you could be doing but i appreciate you guys being here and supporting the stream so thank you uh crispy egg roll uh thank you Pandemus, Beliasa, um, a lot of regulars here. I see a lot of new faces too. Hellscore, Lucky Luke 20, LRT, Eggshan, uh, Saggy Gumdrops. <laughs> um, and I will see you guys tomorrow afternoon. I'm going to, there's no stream tomorrow morning because I'm going to be running. I'm going to be running a 10K. So wish me luck. Hopefully I will recover in time for the stream. All right. Catch you guys later.